Okay, you take it, you stay where you are. Six more bone at the moment. Okay, guys, you want to come on through? Keep to the cones, please. Walk around. Okay, well, welcome back. It's really good to see you. So you're coming to meet people today. Obviously, it's part of induction stuff, which is great. Who knew that when a school was closed, there'd be more work than when it was open? We've had a lot of staff here actually open for quite a while um, as part of um, the Building Recovery and Mobilisation team, which is literally a posh word for sticking things down on floors, segregating areas, trying to get everything in place ready for the students. Our belief and the science suggests that we will not be coming back in a normal way in September and therefore we have created every single plan to work through to at least November. We've made the decision to go as a one-way system, just it means that everyone's not walking you know, straight into the corners. So to get from there to there, you've now got to go downstairs, round the ground floor, and back up down the corridor. It's crazy, absolutely crazy. My unique challenges here are very small size. The fact we're based around a single building with only two doors that come into the building. 90% of our students come on public transport, which is why we've taken the additional measures of putting the sinks in. Our toilets are right in the centre of the building. So to get them to go to the toilet and wash their hands would mean they'd have to pass through nearly all the building to get there. We're right in the centre of Birmingham. We've got the Aston Expressway, we've got the motorway, the M6 is the other side of those flats just there. So for a pollution perspective, there is no windows that open in the building. I'm really excited to go to school actually. I'm excited to actually see how it's set up now. I am very, very nervous to go back to school. But at the same time, I'm looking forward to meeting my teachers and my friends. What if you get the virus? What if you accidentally give someone else the virus when you get home? Especially if you live with older people and people who might have disabilities or other health conditions. I think there's more of a worry for people that do go on public transport. I feel like it's going to be really strange seeing the new layout of the building, how everything's going to be quite like regimented and blocked out and you go in, stay at one desk and then leave and you know, like break or lunch or anything. I think so now I just got off the bus, now I'm just walking to college, um, but I'm not going to take the usual entrance that they usually tell us to take. There's another direction we should take, which is all the way to the back of the college, for the washing stations that we're going to need to use in order to be able to enter college. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So that's eight students out of a possible 27. We've still got probably 10 minutes to go, um, so yeah. Hi guys, you alright? Yeah? You've got a bit of a glitch in your system. Have I? No waiting. No waiting. Oh, no waiting. I see. Ah, yeah, no waiting. That's very good. How did you get here today? Bus. On the bus, so how was that today? It, was, it felt normal. It felt normal? Mm -hmm. No problem at all? Many people on there? No, not a lot. Not actually. a lot at all. Mm -hmm. You got your mask on? Yeah. Mm -hmm. To make sure that goes inside your bag so it's out of the way, it's nice and safe then. Who are you sharing a laptop with? Brother. Your brother and sister. How did you work that out? Who had what time? How did you compete? Fighting most. Fighting most of the time. She had one laptop between three of you? That's difficult, isn't it? It is. One of the challenges we've even got in the fact that we've got temporary buckets underneath to collect the water. We'll obviously plumb them in properly, but this is part of a, a long-term process. Okay, brilliant. Head yourself through. Yeah. Good morning, how are you? Hi. It's very nice to see you. Keep going round up the front stairs. Being here today, it's like a ghost town, really. It's really weird. Like, literally, there's no one here. They're literally just deserted. I feel like a new place and a place that I've missed at the same time. I don't know how that works. Everything's normal to a certain degree, but everyone's a bit on edge. <laughs> As if the first day I arrived again, that same feeling. Did a little welfare check. First thing we had is a couple of people haven't read the full information. So I just was running through a little bit of like settling in stuff before we get into some maths ready for the end of your exams. You're going to have two minutes. It's a little quick warm up just to see if you've been able to bring your brains together. Okay. Up until this point, we've kind of been able to say the Year 11s haven't even gone to their GCSEs yet. We've got ages, and now we're the next group to do our GCSEs, and it's become Hold very up. real. Pandemic, exams, missed all this learning, even more pressure building up. This is our generation's world war with the invisible enemy, and we have no clue what to expect, what to do. I feel like it's going to be something that's not going to go away the second that like things open up or by the end of the year it's going to be filled for quite a while. 
I'd rather have an extra year to be honest because you know education for life so yeah it's pretty hard. There's many different ways that I get anxious walking around school trying to keep the distance and trying to learn without being scared to learn. It's going to be really hard to walk around without, it's like you're dodging people. Finish question three, you can have a look at question four. I know some friends and family, their children have been working full time at home, they've got their own computer, they've got their own bedroom, they've got their own space to work. Some of our students have got that, some haven't. And those ones who were at home with a sibling or two sharing their bedroom and a computer between six. I mean, even if they have the best motivation in the world, they've not got the opportunity. And motivation varies as well. I don't think we're going to be able to 100% close this gap. Um, I think we're looking at damage control. We saw today about 32 students walk through the door. Were our systems in place? Did they work? And the positive is yes, they did but they work very effectively for 30 students. See you tomorrow, yeah. Even if there was a fully comprehensive summer programme, which clearly with three weeks to go, we just don't have enough time to put stuff in place. The amount of stuff they've got to cover next year alone is huge. And my challenge is I really am worried at the moment of how we're going to work forward with enough work for next year to get that in, as well as what's clear from today already, there's definitely a recovery-based curriculum in, in place. This isn't about who does the best home learning, because I can tell you we've got a fantastic online home learning. We've been very high technical here. But even our percentage of uptake, both from a motivation perspective, but also who can access it, has been fairly medium to low. And that's my biggest concern, that we'll find that students from inner city backgrounds will absolutely be behind those from more affluent and certainly the independent sector.